Hey guys, Frank here, your, your virtual general aviation aviator. And today I am in the Thronda Beaver, the DHC-2 Beaver. Now, this aircraft is brand new and I am at McNair Fisheries in British Columbia, Canada. And I'm here on a, an important mission one of the workers have gotten hurt up in the back country and a group has gone up with ATVs to bring him down. Um, he was with the survey team and I think he fell off of a ravine and, um, and broke some bones and maybe have some internal injuries. Anyway, as soon as they should be back momentarily any time they've been gone for hours now and uh, I've just received radio well I've recently received a radio transmission that they should be back in about 20 minutes or so so I'm gonna go ahead and get the aircraft ready to go um, now one thing about the Thronda Beechcraft Beaver is it's an awesome aircraft uh, it has an, an extremely useful payload. You can um, you can do it whatever you want with the livery. This is a custom livery that I put on it, um, and I could go in and make this livery look a lot older. In fact, right now, this uh, this paint on this wing look brand new. So. Just to show you how easy it is, let me just go ahead and uh, and see if we can't make that that wing paint look a little older. So here I got dirt, so I can add some dirt to that wing. Uh, let's see. I think I'm not sure which way it goes to add the dirt. So let's see if we can't see the dirt coming in. Let's, let's add some scratches too. And let's um, roughen up that metal a little bit. And make the metal not so metallic. You know, it has aged. And let's wash out the color a little bit. Okay, and let's apply that, just see what we get. So while that's applying, applying, <laughs> um, let's pop in our, our GPS and figure out where we at, where we going. Okay, so we at, at MacNail. Uh, it's here in the back country and it should pop back in in a second. Uh, our plan is to fly the passenger up here to to Bella Coola where there's a a faster air ambulance waiting at this back country um, back country airport. I believe the air, the air ambulance is probably gonna be like a PC-12 or something, something that's um, that's fast enough to get him down to to Vancouver, which is the hospital that we're trying to get him to. And Vancouver should be down here south. Yeah, Vancouver is here. So, so we're here where the blue dot is blinking. And let's see if I can't change the aspect ratio of this a little bit more. So we're here where the blue dot is blinking. We're going to fly him to Charlie Yankee Bravo Delta where he's going to catch an air ambulance down to 
to Charlie Yankee Victor Romeo, which is uh, Vancouver, and uh, and from there he'll get ferried to the trauma center there. Okay, so now that you know the plan, all I'm waiting for for is those guys to get back with my passenger and while I'm waiting on them to get back then let me tell you a little bit about the aircraft let's get out of these trees okay and get in the cockpit here okay so this is Throndler's newest aircraft, it was just released hours ago, and it is literally a study craft airplane. I mean, everything works. Fuses, um, pretty much everything, and not only does it work, but it works like it should. Um, also... I can tell you that that this aircraft um, has the DGS series, the dynamic generation series that Thronda uses to allow you as the pilot or the aircraft owner to configure this guy any way you want. Now, I've got it configured um, by default, I I haven't changed anything in the in the cockpit yet. Uh, my plan is to um, to rip this guy out, this um, this G530 here, and put a GTN750 in. Also, I probably I may wind up uh, modernizing the cockpit. Um, a little bit, not with glass, but with just a more um, a cockpit with more sharper edges on the dash. Or I might keep this old school look um, and and do some things to make it look aged and just keep an, an aged aircraft. But right now, uh, it looks like it's brand new. And speaking of brand new, you can get refurbish um, you can get your de Havilland beaver refurbished to look just about brand new from a company called Viking I think they are somewhere up in um, up in Canada um, I can't recall which province but um, but without further ado let's get this guy started okay now I'm cold and dark because I've been here quite a few hours and so I'm going to start it from a cold and dark state. Okay. So there are some things that we need to do. And I've only started it from cold and dark once. So hopefully I can do it again. All right. So the first thing I want to do is turn my fuel tank on. So I'm going to turn it to the, to the front tank. You generally burn... Um, gas in this aircraft front, center, and rear, I do believe, is what I read. Um, I can actually add ore from the cockpit even while it's in flight. Um, I think I heard that somewhere, but, but that won't pertain to this flight. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, well, the second thing, I've already set up my tanks, is I want to pressurize my fuel lines and this is a wobber, so I've got a gauge right here uh, where it says fuel. And so I'm going to take this wobber and I'm going to pump it up uh, till it's in the green. So that's, um, that's one, two, three. Now, I don't want to pump it too high because I can... Um, overpressurize it and cause a fuel leak. All right. So now that I've got that done, of course, I want my mixture and my prop full forward. 
okay I'm gonna crack the throttle and go ahead and turn my master and my alternator on beacon light comes on and just in case they come out of the woods just just for the sake of safety I'm gonna go ahead and turn my strokes on which is that button okay now before I can start this guy from cold and dark, I'm gonna need to prime it. And uh, Theronda did include a, an animation to help prime it. So I think I'm gonna use that am animation just to help you out. In fact, um, first, but I am gonna get it primed. So I've got a view here. And there's my primer. So I want to lift that guy and then push it down. I'm going to do that about four times. That was one, two, and that's the fear you hear coming in it. Three, and four. All right. So. Now I should be good and primed and the animation that I was telling you about is on the general here and it's the radio engine animation. And I can see that I do have fuel in it and I could actually, I, I, when I prime it, I do want it in the green so I can actually add one more prime to it, one more pump to it just for good measure. And you see how it moves? Okay. And crack that prop clear. And we got a good start. Awesome. Awesome. So I just heard on the radio that those guys are about three minutes out. So they should be getting me loaded up any second now. So I would like to go ahead and open the doors now is that loud or what <laughs> okay so i don't really need to open all of the doors And actually, let me turn my engine sounds down a little bit because I could very well be getting drowned out. Okay, exterior, interior, and actually, I want to turn master up a little bit. Okay. Oh man, that engine sounds good. I wish you could hear it from my perspective. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this door open. Now they are here and they finally got my engine passenger in and they're in the process of getting it strapped down. So he's on board. So now I want to go ahead and turn my avionics on. And let me just pop back, let's see, let's just pop in to the G530 here. 
and put our destination into this guy. Now, if you are not familiar with the G530, if you've got X-Plane, then it's one of the first, it's the default G, uh, Garmin GPS that comes with most aircraft that that X-Plane flies, so I would suggest that you, uh, you become familiar with it. It's really a a great little system once you learn to use it. However, at this point, it is becoming more of a, one of those legacy systems. Okay, so I now have a flight plan that kind of give me an idea of where I am. Let's see, I'm not, I'm here, and I actually want to modify this and make my make my destination the um, Bella is that Bella Cola uh, Cola Bella Cola Bella Cola okay so direct to all right so now I think we got that straightened out. And so now we need to just check our temperatures, make sure that, that we are hot enough. Okay, so our oil temperature is in the green, and our fuel pressure is holding, and our, operate, our engine operating temperature is in the green. So we are good for takeoff. So let's get rid of this guy here. And get back in the cockpit. Go ahead and brief our passengers. Um, so our plan is to follow a specific river up to our destination. We do have our GP. We do have it in our GPS, just in case for for whatever reason we get lost or it can help us stay orientated, um, so that we know that we are going in the right direction. All right. Uh, this is a tail dragger. I'm, dragger. I'm sure that you saw that. And let's put on our headphones. Uh, that should be somewhere around here. Uh, there it is. Okay. So now that we got our headphones on, hopefully we don't have to holler at you guys and let's let go of our brakes brake check okay and if you are wondering what this guy is this is our avionics master because our avionics are third party the, uh, they were put in after the plane was manufactured and the installer put the master button on up here on the dash okay so we need to find our windsock because we need to know which side of the of the field to take off on with me here.
engine sounds are pretty loud, so I'm gonna turn them down just a little for my own benefit. Okay. Um, actually, I turned the computer volume down so that so they still they should the sound should still be the same for you. All right, I'm looking for that windsock. Will help. Now this is Mash Macnail um, in the back country, and if I'd have been thinking, I'd have gave given you a better tour of this location. And I am, um, to be honest with you, I am not a hundred percent sure where where the runway is. <laughs> I guess you can tell. All right, so bear with me. Okay, now I think I got my bearings, and I'm glad that you were able to see that. Okay, so this this location is pretty much abandoned in real life. Um, I suspect the the airstrip is used occasionally. What is that? I suspect the airfield is occasionally used uh, by pilots who just want to to come in and, and uh, go on the wrong way. part about it is I got a sick passenger so I better stop playing around and get this guy off so he can catch his air ammo lamps. Uh, they should be en route. So I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to this aircraft. Uh, it's a great aircraft and you may have seen this scenery in some other, some videos by some other uh, YouTube people. The old boat there. I don't think that's going to float anymore. Still not seeing a windsock, and obviously there's no AWAS, ASOS, or ATAS available at this location. So uh, looks like the winds are fairly calm. Set my altimeter. Uh, Are off. Let's 
Let's give her some flaps for takeoff. Pop those up. Let's do this 12 to 15 nautical mile flight. So this is where we just took off from. I thought it was mighty loud. Um, I had taken off my headphones and I just put them back on. But um, I'm a circle where we just took off from just so that we can enjoy the scenery. Now the scenery match nail fisheries. Uh, this is the Elstrip is freeware scenery, so you guys can get it for free. Uh, I think it's from Prop Strike Studios and load it up in the X-Plane and enjoy. Grab the uh, Thronda, the Beaver, the Thronda, the Beaver, and do some bush, some backcountry bush flying. Okay, so we want 2,000 feet. Actually, let's let's just do 1,500. Um, so let's raise our, our flaps, a couple of notches, and adjust our our manifold our manifold pressure. Uh, now. I was pouring through the manual earlier today and I could almost declare, because I don't want to swear, that I saw something that said the manifold pressure should be around 16, but that didn't look right uh, for crews. It's almost too dark in here to refer to this manual. Um,
Okay, so looks like 28 inches of manifold pressure and roughly about 1800 for the RPM should be what we are going for. So let's go ahead and let me go ahead and get up the altitude. Now I do have um, custom weather. I could have put in a clear day and I am doing a 180 here. Uh, I should be going in a northerly direction. All right, so let's get up to our 1500 and reconfigure for cruise. We're at Flaps are fully up. Let's get trimmed out here. Okay, so our fishery count is right here. Okay, I had too much nose down attitude there. back up to cruise altitude. I want to see, show you guys where we had taken off from and just completely blew, just completely lost 500 feet. I've been flying the Porter, which flies with a nose down attitude, and this aircraft seems to be straight and level with a slightly nose up attitude. Okay, so this is our cruise configuration. And we're just following the river.
has not actually lost on me that I didn't put in the weight balance for my passenger. So I actually thought about that when I was taking off and I decided to just leave the weight balance alone. But this aircraft feels weight balance sensitive. Love the Canadian Rockies. And maybe we can spot a bear or a caribou. you imagine how awesome it must be to experience this route in real life? Now, as pilot in command, I could have chosen to climb above these mountains and take a more direct course, but as you can see, I've got some low-line clouds and this is a VFR flight. Uh, speaking of which, it might be a good idea to turn the transponder on. There's this thing called lights, camera, action, right? <laughs> I got some trim buttons overhead here. Elevator trim, and I think there's a rudder trim and some some lights. Uh, I actually uh, tend to use the trim button on my yoke, so I don't have to reach up here to constantly uh, reach for that trim tab. 
and I did turn it, so so I may have to retrim here. Now, one thing that I can, t I feel like I can tell is that the elevation of the river and lakes is getting a little higher because even though I'm still at, at roughly at 1,500, give or take 100, um, the ground feels like it's closer to me. So that's probably, it could be that the barometric pressure is, is going down. Incidentally, this is my first time flying through here. spend too much time looking at the aircraft in this, in this valley with mountains to the left and mountains to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Stuck in the middle.
and I was just getting familiar. I was just getting familiar with uh, Bella Coola, our destination, and we got runways 5 and 23, uh, 5 and 2, 3. When we turn in, looks like we are going to turn toward 2, 3. So if we did 5, if we landed on 5, which, um, which would put us in the pattern, then we want to fly uh, right traffic. So we want to stay on the side of the river here and so we want to fly we'll be coming from this direction and we want to fly here and land kind of that way. So that um, you know that may not be entirely right because um, if north is let's see north should be up here right so five is probably going to be in this direction and we'll be coming from this direction and we want right traffic so we probably want to fly up here and then down all right so We've been flying for a while on our front tank. Let's check our gas in that tank. So we've got um, a little bit of look up. I think our passengers enjoyed that. Okay, so we're on this tank here, and I don't like running the tank dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my center tank. Oh, that ain't what I had in mind. center and okay so do I not have gas in that center tank okay so and I'm getting this is one good way to get checked out in this aircraft is the to learn what you can and cannot do. So, I want to keep some reference to my horizon and look at my gauge. Front middle yet yeah, middle says um, empty so I've switched to my real tank I actually did not have gas in my middle tank who knew now with some aircraft switching and running out 
might would cause a complete shutdown of the engine and require a restart, like with some of the turbo jets. So that could be a dangerous thing if I was in, say, a turbo version of this aircraft and made that error. Um, I would have had less than a thousand feet to to perhaps do a restart. These radio engines proved themselves during WW2, World War II, uh, because uh, let me get rid of the map. Sorry, guys. I guess I guess you missed a lot of what I was showing you, trying to show you. Um, so I was just looking at my center tank. And it turns out that the center tank is, is empty. There's my center tank, it says middle. This is my front tank and my rear tank. So I'm on my rear tank now. Um, but I botched checking my center tank during pre-flight. And forgot that I drew that I flew up here on, on my center tank so that I could have my front and rear tanks available when I ferret this passenger. So that's my story. So my, desti my destination at this point is probably about 20 miles. And that's based on a quick check on the iPad. So from, from this point to this point, is 16, 17 miles, and I've got this cor this corner to negotiate. So I'm adding about three or four miles there, so roughly about 20. So this gives you an appreciation for why I didn't want to fly, uh, attempt to fly the passenger to, to Vancouver, which is roughly about 200 miles in the, in the Beaver. The Beaver is, it's not a fast aircraft by any stretch of the imagination. It's um, it's a workhorse. It's a strong, rugged aircraft. It's meant to pick up a load and get the job done rather than get the job done fast. Even though I do have to pay attention to to my weight and balance, that doesn't mean I can't carry the weight. It's just that I've just got to make sure that it's distributed properly. So if you glance down and take a look 
at my GPS here and you'll see my air my airport is just off to my right which is why I'm turning right and I see it's 15 miles so and we're flying at roughly 140 miles so at 150 miles per hour then we would it would take us 10 minutes so it should take us under 10 minutes to get to our destination now Canada is truly the land of lakes and rivers the whole country of Canada is just full of beautiful lakes and rivers but <laughs> it's cold water <laughs> I'm only 500 feet AGL But I figure we split right through the river. It's a fairly wide river. I'm gonna get go ahead and get up the pattern out to let's see what if anything did I learn about my destination. Elevation is 117 feet, so let's round that off to 100 feet. Add a thousand, and that gives us an 1,100 foot pattern. We're at 900 and climbing for 11. Let's see, I'm actually lined up right now for, for five, which would be straight in. And but I am going to turn to the east a little bit. This area opens up so wide that it's hard for me to figure out whether they will refer to this as a lake or a river. Now I know up up ahead there's a river that feed it. So I imagine that this would be considered a lake. Bellacola traffic, De Havilland 
what was I forgot my call number. De Havilland is eight mi uh, six miles out to the south inbound four stop. Let's see, so we are headed east, so that means that we're actually to the west. De Havilland these calls get me sometimes. Uh, let's see what my call sign is. Let's see, it's not on the inside. Bellacota traffic, De Havilland 292, Echo Whiskey is six miles to the east, to the west, inbound four stop, De Havilland, uh, Bellacola. <laughs> yeah. And this is a uh, beaver. Couldn't, couldn't remember what I was flying here. That's what happened when you fly a little a little of this and a little of that. Let's get back up the pattern. And we're four miles out. Okay, glumps. Gas, lights, Undercarriage, mixture, props. Start putting in some flaps. And I see my airport. Bellacola traffic. Beaver. 292 Echo Whiskey is inbound to the east, four stop, runway five, straight in, long final, Bella Cola. Actually, I'm not on a long final, I'm on a two mile final. Bella Cola traffic, Beaver. Echo Whiskey is on a two mile final for five, four stop, Bella Cola. Okay, so I want to slow down the 90. And I want to drag it in at about 80. Flaps here. This airport was certainly, I don't know, it's paid and it's fairly long, so I may even have a jet waiting.
Didn't quite butter the landing, but I'll take it. I, I didn't think that was bad. Didn't think that was a bad landing at all. Right on, right by my, my arm. taxiway. All right, let's stop here and clean up. Let's flap the takeoff. Road lights off, landing lights off, taxi lights on. Make sure, okay, so we're gonna use landing lights for taxi lights and the strobes come off. Bella Cola Traffic, Beaver 2, Beaver 2 Echo W is clear of the runway, Bella Cola. All right, so flaps, um, I think that's it. I think she's clean, and so we just go and park and for the jet. I get the wind sock. Look like I've probably got a calm but a crosswind. So, but I probably should have used the other runway. Somebody's living out here at the airport. Not a bad place to live. You got a got a plane and can tolerate the noise of of other aircraft coming in at all times of day of the day or and night. So we will be marshaled up here somewhere. All right, we can't actually fit in there. So we'll stop right here. All right. Switches. Don't mind stopping. The engine don't mind stopping here. Brakes. All right. And let's let them out. And they can go into the building and wait for the jet. He should be coming in at any, any minute. Anyway, guys, <laughs> I have had a chance to use some imagination on this flight and actually uh, make it a mission. I enjoyed this, and I hope you will enjoy flying the beaver as much as I enjoyed it. And 
there's so much that you can do with this aircraft, um, which which is what really makes it impressive. Uh, there's just so much you can do with it. Uh, with, you can have fun changing deliveries. Um, you can have a lot of fun. And let me just demo the panel just real briefly. Um, let's see. So this is the panel that I have. And, and you see what I mean about the more modern panel? Uh, see how this is not rounded, um, and this is. Anyway, so there's a whole lot you can do with panels, and I do know that Thronda has the glass available for the porter, so they may at some point make glass available for this, a glass cockpit available for this aircraft um, that remains to be seen but in any case i hope you enjoyed this flight and for those of you who stuck with me through the end then i appreciate it see ya